Next Wave DV's coverage of NAB 2011 is made possible by LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video, CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast, Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring, BNH, the professional source for photo, video, and pro audio. Tony here from Next Wave DV, and we're here with Ted from Red. Now, Ted, we've heard about uh, a little bit about the 4K cameras that Sony's doing, but you guys have been around in, in 4K and beyond for a lot longer. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you got. We have. We've been shipping cameras for a few years. Uh, you might have seen Social Network, mm -hmm. that shot with red cameras. Uh, you've probably seen the trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean, the new one that's coming out this summer, the big blockbuster. That shot on red cameras in 3D. Uh, that'll come out in a few months. Uh, there's three Oscar-winning movies shot on red cameras, two uh, best foreign pictures over the last couple of years, both red and this year's best documentary is Red Movie, so, uh, and there's, you know, that's just a few, there's thousands of other stuff uh, on the new cameras. This, this is an Epic behind me, and there's an Epic over here, so that's kind of fully tricked out, and this is more handheld, kind of SLR style configuration, uh, but they're both Epics, they both shoot 5K, um, which derives a true, you derive a true 4K image from the 5K, so whatever kind of marketing spin you hear from these guys and those guys, these are the first true high resolution digital cinema cameras on the planet and the only ones to date. Um, we think it's great that at least one other company that claims that they are a digital cinema manufacturer is actually doing something in digital cinema res. Um, so you know who they are. Um, the others are not yet. They can tell you all kinds of good things about their cameras, which we agree with, they're very good cameras, but they're TV resolution cameras. They're not movie resolution cameras. Very good. And we've been seeing tons of 3D uh, progressing. Um, I've heard like The Hobbit being shot on Epic. Right. So what kind of uh, 3D options are, are progressing? Uh, you name it. You guys can get some B-roll in the booth of a, a rig from Threality that's in there and a rig from uh, Element Technica. Those are the two that, I mean, there's everybody. There's like 20 different rigs. But those are the two we have sitting in our booth um, that uh, are working on um, lots of 3D movies. So Hobbit's using the Threality rigs right now. They have at least 30 Epics. They're going to get more. Um, and uh, it's on, baby. They're they're shooting, and and uh, the footage is phenomenal, as you might imagine. And then I'm guessing the size and the cost effectiveness is what has allowed camera systems that you know usually you'd have one, two, a handful. Uh, now 30 being a number that a cinematographer is choosing. I mean, what, how is that? What do you guys feel about that? Yeah, well, you need those cameras because it's two for every rig, right? And they're using multiple rigs. They have a second unit, third unit. I mean. The Hobbit's probably the biggest budget movie or series of movies to date. So even though that cost is just like a line item, not even doesn't even factor in kind of thing. I mean, it does a little bit, but not 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 enough to make a difference in uh, their choices. The things that they choose on are the quality of the image, the workflow, the resolution, the form factor. All these things kind of come together to you know when when a guy like Peter Jackson makes a decision on a camera, he's not doing it lightly, right? He's looking at all the parameters of what's going to make his movie as cutting edge and groundbreaking as all his past movies and what can take it to the next level. And the Epic is the only choice for him right now. So we're thrilled to be working with him again. David Fincher, of course, is working on Girl with a Dragon Tattoo on Red Ones. He's got a little bit of Epic on that. Um, Steven Soderbergh is, of course, six or seven movies in on the Reds. He's just finishing up Contagion, his latest movie on Reds. So it's, you know, it's, it's become very um, sort of dominant uh, in just a few years. We've also seen like a recent test from FX Guide where they were able to go from incredibly low light to incredibly high light and the Epic was able to maintain it. Uh, how has, is that helping you guys in how you're going to uh, gear your camera for those types of shooters? Sure. So, so these cameras here, the Epics uh, and, and the Scarlet as well, have the ability to do something called HDRX which is a high dynamic range mode in the camera where you can actually set highlight protection for up to six stops. So you saw that stuff when we were in Australia. Uh, Mike and I and some of his crew were out there. Uh, in some of the shots, I was actually hiding in the car behind, behind them, um, doing part of the shooting and stuff, which was a ton of fun. So we mounted one of these Epics on a little mini suction cup mount on the hood of the car, and we were driving through this tunnel with, of course, no light at all except for the light, the fluorescent lights in the tunnel. So we're wide open on the, on the lens. And then the girl's driving comes right out into the, the daylight, into the, um, to the full brightness. So if you look at the normal shot, it's all just completely clipped, right? Because now you're at, all the way closed on the lens. And then 
we just go in and we dial in the HDR because we had it turned on and everything's there. She's perfectly exposed. The sky and the clouds are all there. It's literally like the best iris pull you've ever seen. Like you could never do it that good because you can't. I mean, it's, it's all done in post-production. Um, and that's just a setting in the camera that you set. It's, it's pretty remarkable. And we're just in the early days. It's going to get way better as we keep evolving it. Are there any new post-production options available for shooters? Uh, yeah, it's red and red and post. The marriage is so strong. It's it's actually pretty scary right now in terms of how universal it is, how well adopted it is, and how real time it is. So we build this card called a red rocket card that goes into a Mac or a PC, and it enables the entire post workflow from your offline to your online to your finishing of whatever you're doing, TV res to theatrical res to full 4K res, all in real time. And essentially all the big players have adopted it fully. So um, all the editorial guys, uh, the uh, Apple, uh, uh, you know, Final Cut and Avid and Adobe all use the Red Rocket card. Um, the, uh, all the DI systems that you can name, you can just check off a big list. They're all using it, they all do real time. It's all fast and easy. We announced something called the Red Dragon. So what we did, is we explained to, to everyone that while this red Epic MX camera with the MX sensor is far and away the most advanced piece of hardware on the planet now, it doesn't mean we can't do better. It doesn't mean we will do better because we never stand still. We never say that's good enough. So we're already working on the next generation sensor. We have the specifications. We have it working, test, and, and, and in the lab environment. And uh, that's the first of what we call the Monstro sensor line, the next generation sensors. I'm not giving any specifics about what it is because now apparently a lot of these other camera manufacturers are paying a lot of attention to us and would love to know exactly what we're up to so they can try and react to how we're doing things. This time around we're not going to provide that level of information for them, I hope you understand. Um, but you can take it that if you understood how big a leap from the M to the MX we did, the MX to the Red Dragon is just as significant. and. Um, you ain't seen nothing yet. Very good. And of course, everybody's going to want to know, and I'd be remiss for not saying, any updates on the Scarlet? Yeah, uh, Scarlet's right over there in the corner, shooting away, working. We've, we're in final stages of development on, on it now. Um, it's fully functional, fully running. We've had it up shooting in a helicopter. We've had it running around, shooting tests all over the place. It's probably a few months away from going out into ship mode. So it's getting there. Great to hear. Thanks for your time, Ted. Thanks. Appreciate it. Subscribe to us on YouTube and visit nextwavedv.com for more news and training for video and filmmakers.